Welcome to another Real Python Code Conversation. I'm Philip, and today I want to show you how you can customize your Visual Studio Code settings to make it go from a basic lettered look to a clean, nice, presentable look that is not only very clean and tidy to work in, but also gives you a nice user interface if you want to share the screen via a Zoom session or if you're even doing some video recordings like I'm doing right now and you just want to show your viewers what's really important on the screen. So in the next lessons, I will show you how you can create and export a Visual Studio Code profile, how you can work with user settings, how you can find and adjust your settings, and then how to clean up the VS Code user interface with these settings. This code conversation is perfect for you if you have downloaded VS Code at some point and you never really changed it. So in this video course, you will find inspiration on how to adjust your settings to make it look a little bit nicer. If you're using another code editor besides VS Code, then this course might not be right up your alley. But still, hey, there might be some inspiration for you that you can translate into your own code editor. Or maybe there are some convincing arguments to try VS Code out. because. There is nothing against switching code editors here and there. And last but not least, if you have no idea what VS Code is, VS Code is a code editor that you can write Python code or any other code in. So maybe you have experience with Python's idle editor, then VS Code could be an upgrade to this editor. If you're curious, just look at realpython.com for some tutorials on VS Code or you can skip to the last lesson of this video course where I show some additional resources. So navigate this course at your own comfort and I will see you in the next lesson where I show you how to set up a user profile in VS Code. Profiles in VS Code are a great idea to contain any settings you're customizing. By default, you're in the default user profile, which is generally fine to work with that. But profiles give you more options to export them, to maybe have different profiles for different work environments. And for this video course, it's just a nice playground to play around with things. You can find the profiles menu by clicking the gear icon where you can manage some settings. And there you can see that the current profile is default. In the context menu, there is also the option to create a profile. Alternatively to using the mouse, you could also use the command palette. For this video course, I might use the command palette with Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. But since I don't want to rush things, you will mostly see me using the mouse. So again, click the gear icon, go to the profile menu, and from there, click Create Profile. And then you see a pop up window where you can set a profile name, you can define from which profile you want to copy from, and there are actually already some profile templates. We will ignore them for now. For this video course, we will start from scratch with the profile, and you can use an icon. Here, let's use the smiley, and then you can choose what to configure in your profile. So. Here you select settings, keyboard shortcuts, user snippets, user tasks, and extensions. In this video course, we'll only tackle the settings, but it's a good idea to have everything in place for this profile. And then the first input field was asking for a profile name. So let's call the one for this video course Playground, because that's actually what we want to do, playing around with the settings a little bit. Once you click Create, you can see on the lower left where you click the gear icon that now there is a smiley icon that we selected. And you can see that now when you click it, you basically manage your playground profile. And that's the perfect starting ground to adjust some settings. In VS Code, you can find your settings either by clicking the menu bar or by using the command palette or by using your user profile icon. That's what we'll do now. So when you click the smiley icon of the playground profile that you just created, you can see that there is the settings menu. Once you click the settings menu item, then the settings open. And that's VS Code's user interface to edit settings. That's a cool way of getting to know the settings because there are additional descriptions. One way of thinking about this user interface for your settings is like a documentation, because like I said, there is an explanation for most of your settings right there. 
If you want to get proper documentation, then you can head over to the Visual Studio Code website where you have a getting started guide and there you also get an introduction to the settings in VS Code. If you're curious about all the settings you can set, you actually have to read through the documentation and depending on which topic you're reading about, there might be settings attached to it. So generally, I like it more to browse and search through the settings user interface in VS Code. When you're editing the settings, you can do this in this user interface as well. We'll come back to this in a moment. But generally, you will use the settings.json file that's attached to your user settings. And you can find the settings.json file by clicking this little document icon with the arrow on the upper right. Since you didn't adjust any user settings for you, this settings.json file is empty right now. And if you're there for the first time, it's a little bit confusing what to actually write there. So that's where the settings user interface comes in handy again. To show you something about it, I moved the settings.json file to the right, and now on the left there is a settings user interface. And to show you how the settings user interface and the settings.json file play together, you can just go in anywhere in the settings user interface. So there is, for example, like the commonly used page at the beginning, but on the left side, you see a bunch of stuff you can edit for a text editor, workbench, window, etc. But for now, let's, for example, change the font size to a bigger font size. And once you change this font size setting, and hit enter, then you can see on the right side in the settings JSON file that there is now a property editor font size 14. Once you change the setting back to the default setting and hit enter, then you can see on the right side again that the settings JSON file is empty. The reason for this is that if you use the default settings from VS Code, so there is no adjustments there, there is no need to save it in your user setting file, right? Because you're just using the default stuff. But if you want to edit something, then it will be added to the settings JSON file. In the next lessons, you will do this by hand. So I will tell you what the properties are and you can try them out. But if you're curious at some point, just open up your settings and then see how the settings JSON file changes if you do changes in the user interface. The first setting I chose to use for this video course is the window zoom level. This can come in handy if you want to share your screen for your colleagues in a remote session or for me when I'm having a video course presenting VS Code to you. And I want to have everything a little bit bigger because depending on which screen you're watching the video course right now, it might be a bit small what you're seeing. So VS Code got you covered and you can go into the curly braces of this JSON and start with quotes and then type window dot. And as you can see, VS Code already suggests a few settings and there you want to use window dot zoom level. By default, the zoom level is zero. And for this video course, I want to choose three. Once you press Command S or Control S to save the file, you see that the whole interface changes. The window zoom level really tackles the whole user interface. So it's not just the fonts you're seeing, it's basically any interface item. If this is too big for you, you can of course set the zoom level to one, save, try it out, see how it looks, or set it to two, save, and see how it looks. I think I will actually go with two. Generally for the video courses, I'm using even Windows Zoom level four when I really want to zoom in on the code. But since today it's more about Visual Studio Code as a whole, Zoom level two should be fine.